break uh, about some of the issues uh, around human settlements, education, and also uh, the municipality and how it's come out of uh, challenging times and uh, also an interesting agricultural village project uh, uh, that's also underway. Uh, so let's unpack some of those with you at home and also with our audience here. Uh, and in fact, let's go straight to our tables because I'm interested to hear what uh, people are saying here and what they're thinking. And then I will also pose some more questions uh, to our panels. Let's go to table number six. And uh, I think it's Selo uh, Modibedi. Table number six. Uh, thank you, Peter. I've got only two questions. The first question is uh, to Amy Sim Lamleli with regard to the number of two rooms which have been converted into decent housings. Uh, we need to know how many beneficiaries are there. Uh, to MEC Mahwe, uh, it's on the scholar transport, the beneficiaries, the figures in particular, as well as the number of boarding schools uh, for farm learners. Uh, also, there we are expecting to get uh, figures to say how many beneficiaries are there. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with you, MEC. Uh, thank you very much, Peter, and for the question. Mm. The two rooms that we have done now, it's about 1,300, but we are continuing with Brownville, Yoskonkenville, in Helbron. We have started with that. All right. We're talking about what's been done. I'm curious to know what the shortfall and backlog is. The shortfall of, in Kwakwa only is 3,500. In, in Fuljinskron, we, we are completing 72. In Brownville, we are starting now with, we have already started mm -hmm. last week with a uh, hundred in Tabong and 50 in Brownville. Mm -hmm. But Peter and audience, I want you to know that it is not only in the township, in the so-called colored areas. We have completed hundreds in, in, in Pelindaba, in Bloemfontein, and Heidedal, we have completed a hundred as well. Mm -hmm. We are continuing because you don't do them at once. We are controlled by the available budget, but it is in the program, mm. we are doing it in phases. Even in Kwakwa, out of 1,300, we are now started, completed 500. Mm. Let me see, Mahwa. Thanks, Peter. Um, <clears throat> maybe the, I think I must also thank the question. Um, the, the, the numbers are as follows. Um, the hostel project that we have, we've got 28 of them and uh, we are now housing 3,426 learners. Uh, it must also be mentioned that these are farm learners. These are mm. children f from the very poorest areas. And, and what is also good about this uh, hostel project is that uh, all the children who are attending this hostel project of government don't pay a cent. But over and above that, we create employment we also prefer that uh, because these children are, the far, are from the farms, people who should be working there, they themselves must be from the farms. And it's a campaign that we are running. I know it is difficult to, 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 for parents to part with their children at early age, but if you look at the children of the farmers themselves, the white farmers, most of their children are actually attending boarding schools. So we are slowly encouraged because we want more and more children to go into mm. boarding schools because they can have three meals there. They can have um, um, playgrounds. They can have mm -hmm. access to TV, access to ICT, and so on. Because we want, to, we make sure that wherever they are, mm -hmm. they don't miss home. I can also tell you, Peter, that uh, some of them, we treat them so well that uh, over the weekend, when they are supposed to go back home, they actually refuse to go back <laughs> home. They want to stay over the whole mm -hmm. the week. Are, the, are you, the, the, you're not having the challenge of having children from beyond the free state wanting to come and enjoy these facilities? Um, we, we, we have uh, in, in, in other schools, Bonacali, so and so on, we do have that. But uh, we also have that, I think, from uh, other provinces, as you say, Eastern Cape and so on, especially after the good performance of the free state, everybody wants to follow the leader, so they come to a province that does well. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we can't say no, they are South Africans, and uh, as long as they meet the socioeconomic status, we allow them in, 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 in those hostels. 
Uh, in terms of learner transport, mm. which is uh, one area that is uh, a very big challenge, I must concede. Uh, it's a challenge because some of the entrepreneurs who come there promise to deliver children with nice cars. Once they've gotten the tender, they use uh, substandard cars. And we have discussed with the MEC for police, and we are, rating, we are rating these cars. And I think that we have also told them that if we can discover that you said you're going to transport these children in car A, and suddenly now that we've got a contract we're using car E, we may even con cancel the contract. And these are the challenges that we're having. But I must say that uh, we are transporting more than 8,851 learners who have been transported mm -hmm. uh, from 166 uh, 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 farming communities every day. Mm. And remember, all these children also have got a decent meal at school. Okay, all right. Table 17, uh, KJ Rasunyan. Table 17. Uh, my question will be to the MEC for Human Settlement. Uh, I just want to find out when is the process of allocation of houses and the starting of building the RDP house, houses going to be completed? Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the question. We are in the process of completing a Peter. We don't we have changed, really. We don't just appoint people by knowing people or seeing a person somewhere, driving a big car and so forth. We are advertising, inviting everybody who wants to assist us in building houses. The advert goes from November, it closed 15 January. Now we are finalizing it because we are now in the new financial year, as it is April. Very soon, I think in two weeks' time, we'll be starting, I as the MEC, We'll be sitting down with the HODs, looking at the data of the people that have been cleared, and then appointing from them. We are very strict on that. We are unpopular on that, but we are very strict. We want people that will be completing houses because we've got a very bad experience where houses, many of them, were standing alone there, incomplete foundations. So we are going to appoint very soon the people that are going to perform, the people that have got capacity to get material, enough material, building houses, our people occupying 50 square meter houses. Part of that challenge, uh, my understanding is that there was an element of corruption also. Is that something that you've been able to clean up? Absolutely, yes. What we did, we found out that there were some officials who contributed in these houses to be incomplete, frustrating residents, frustrating even the contractors. We have suspended 14 of them, some of the senior managers, and junior managers. Some of them are already dismissed. We are finalizing uh, the case of senior managers. And also the contractors, Peter and audience, they have really contributed in the poor workmanship. We look at your work, advised by the engineers, we sit down and decide it. Most of the, the uh, incompetent uh, contractors, they have been uh, terminated. Yes, it was bitter for them, but it didn't do have anything to do. So, so we had to satisfy is, our community. Is the process more transparent now? Uh, the people that are getting the tenders and are being, becoming the suppliers, uh, can people see uh, why they were chosen um, and not? Because one of the hang-ups that we have is that you've got to know somebody. And if you don't know somebody, you're not going to get a gig. That is why, Peter, I'm saying to you that we put an advert inviting everybody. We take them through the processes. Mm. We even go to the bank yeah. and look for the bank rating. And then they put all their applications in a box. When the box is open, they are there. And we do have the, the, the list of the data. And it is not done by us only in the department. We do have other stakeholders. The HDA is, is there, NHBRC, they are there to assist us in doing that. Thereafter, then they give it to us, the department, I submit it to the Executive Council, then it is known that these are the people that are performing, then the MEC and the HOD can sit down and choose from those. But be that as it may, there are still those that are trying their luck, but when you look at the data, they are in the red. Okay. But we also don't dump them, we are helping them and encouraging them to subcontract. They don't like it, but they can't afford. We can't afford Peter and audience to let our people wait in there and have houses incomplete. Right. 
Okay, more after this break. Stay with us.